you failed the FE exam. Now you're probably running through a lot of questions, a lot of doubts, asking yourself, what should I do next? What did I really mess up on? What are my weak topics? How can I do better? Why did I fail? Slow down. Stop. Failing this is normal. It's part of the journey and it's going to be part of your own journey. Do not compare your journey to other students. Yours is defined by your life circumstances, how you like to learn, the way you learn at your own pace. So take a step back, take a deep breath, just know you're still making progress and you're going to keep going. This failure does not define you. It does not define whether you're a good or bad engineer. It does not define whether you can learn these concepts and these topics. And it definitely does not define whether you're capable of passing this exam. Because if you keep going, you're going to pass this. Do not give up. Many students struggle through this. It takes multiple attempts. You're going to learn after each attempt. You're going to notice your weak areas, whether it's going to be the topics or it might be test taking strategies that you need to improve on. Small improvements each day, one step at a time. And I'm here to help you stay on track by helping you analyze the infamous NCS diagnostic report. Did you get yours? Get yours ready because we're going to analyze this together using this direct hub diagnostic report analyzer. Let's analyze this diagnostic report that I pulled off Reddit, went on Reddit, got this off Reddit for the civil FE exam. So this is what I focus on civil FE exam. That's why I have a preparation course to help you master all these topics from one up to topic 14 everything you're going to know it all through my preparation program if you're interested in a prep course check out the link in the description if you have other disciplines environmental mechanical industrial electrical and the fe other disciplines as well you can still use this diagnostic report to help you analyze this very infamous and complicated to read chart we're going to make it visual and we're going to try to get a score out of this a weighted average score as we will see so let's put this down for now and let me show you how to access this. You're going to go to free resources, FE exam, diagnostic report analyzer. I'll link that in the description. Click that and we're going to go and see this. First of all, the NCS says this. So this analyzer, the report they give is going to be recommendations for interpreting these reports. So performance and knowledge areas significantly below the average passing examinee may have contributed to the failing results and require substantial study areas near or just above the average passing level may still benefit from further review to improve your chances of passing so if we look at this the average passing examinee is going to be here the dashed one and we know this student so this one is easier to read for this report it's obvious one through six is Actually, one through seven materials, they got a zero. They got zero correct answers for that. So it's very obvious it's that first half that got this student. Those are the weak area topics, one through seven. They did pretty well on fluids and surveying. That's still in the first section. One through nine is the first half, first section for the civil FE. They did good on fluids and surveying for this, but that wasn't enough to get them enough points, enough correct answers to hit the passing score. Again, the exam is graded on the number of correct answers out of 100 questions. On the real exam, there's 110 questions, but 10 questions are thrown out. They're pre-test items. They're testing across exams. They do not count toward your grade, nor do they count against your grade. They grade only 100 questions out of the 100. The number you get correct is what counts towards your score. It is a scaled score that we do not know. The NCES does not release this score. So here, based on this, we know, okay, we have to compare ourselves to the average passing examinee. So we have to hit that level somehow. So these are our weak areas. So for this, it's one through seven is going to be very apparent for this construction is lacking 14 for this it's below the average but this student did pretty well well compared to the first half on the second section topics topic 10 through 14 water resources up until construction now let's take this a step further and actually visualize and analyze this and try to get a score 
we can get, let's say, something we call a weighted average score. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use this and we would go down here and select your discipline, get yours ready, select your discipline. For this, it is the civil that I'm doing and I'm going to import my scores here. So what I'll do is put this with you. So let me just put this in real time. So first one is an 8. So I got a score of 8. Let me show you that. That would be this, your performance on the scale 0 to 15. We're using their scale. We're going to put an 8, 8.6, 6.8, and so on. And we just go in that order. So that would be 8. This is 8.6. Next one is 6.8. Um, next one is 5.6. Then we have 6.8 again. Let's see. After that, 6.4. So 6.4 is mechanics and materials. So I'm on the right one. Notice it's seven items. That means it's seven possible questions that I could have gotten correct. That number is important when we calculate the weighted average. After that, we got a zero. So that's a big one. Materials, there's some easy points out of this. So whoever has this diagnostic, I got it off Reddit, you can do way better in materials. I believe you can stress strain diagrams. Some of the questions are plug and chug, and some of them are in directly in the FE handbook. So definitely stress strain diagram, concrete mix design, the basics of concrete mix design, aggregates, how they impact the mix, and all that stuff is important. You can definitely do better on materials. Let's grab some points out of that. But that one is a zero. Fluid mechanics is going to be 10.1. So that one, very nice. You did good on that one. So then the surveying 10.5, excellent. So that's above the average, fasten examinee. Water resources environmental 8.9, very close to the average. Structural. That is also That's a tough one for many students. So above the average, also geotechnical. Nice. And then 8.4 for this one and 8.1. So definitely it's apparent it's the first half that got the student in this case. And what we will do is just click analyze results. Click that and you're going to see this good stuff. So I tried to make this really visual for you. And what we're going to do is get a total weighted average score. Again, the NCS says we can't get a score out of this. We can't get the total number of correct questions. The number of questions we answered correctly cannot be determined from these scaled scores. We cannot get that. But we, what we can do is get a weighted average score based on what we're given. This is all the data we have. We have a nice... Average passing examinee, definitely look at that. You definitely want to be above that average passing examinee or very close to that. But at the same time, let's try to use these numbers in any way we can. So here, when we analyzed, so when I looked at a lot of these diagnostic reports, there was a pattern. There was a pattern that nearly all their weighted scores were below 60%. So based on this, we're going to estimate that the real passing cutoff is around 66.7, which is a 10 out of 15 on average, but that's going to be on the high end, 66.7 to be on the very safe side. Now to be safe, let's say, let's aim for that. Let's aim that to shoot high. We're going to set a high standard and aim for that. At the same time, I want to tell you that the low passing end is 60 percent because again nearly all the way the averages that i looked at analyzed a bunch of these were below 60 percent for failing diagnostic reports for the civil fe exam so with that said we're gonna aim and we want to be above 60 percent 66.7 is great to be very on the safe side but here let's say 60 percent is our minimum passing mark that we have to hit. In this case, we didn't meet it. It's going to be 54.4% as a total weighted average score that's calculated based on the data that we just put in. Again, this is a pseudo percentage based on performance and the item count, the number of items. For example, the number of items is 
the weighted part, we account for that weight. This has 10, it has 10, it has 10. Mechanics and materials has seven. Statics has a lot, it has eight. So we account for that weight to actually account for the distribution of the number of questions or items that are actually tested. So it is a weighted average score that we get. The goal is to be close to 60% and above. Now, looking at this, we have also a visual that we have here. Geotechnical is definitely the strongest area, the far right. The weakest is the one we got zero on, so that's going to be materials. Then statics is weak, so that, to me, is going to be very important. It tells me some good stuff because statics is going to carry into a lot of the other topics, mechanics and materials structural surprisingly what's interesting is they did really good in structural but their performance on statics was lacking that's very interesting to see i would think structural would be on the weak side but that is interesting maybe they were reviewing a lot of good structural questions for that but definitely statics gets carried into mechanics and materials dynamics even fluid mechanics when we look at hydrostatics statics is one that i absolutely recommend for the student to put a, a lot of quality study time so we have this and this is just a good visual for you to look at when you analyze your report now we have a section that breaks down the weakest knowledge areas strongest knowledge areas didn't want to make this too complicated just gave you four for each weakest materials statics mechanics and materials engineer economics so those are the ones we should definitely hit strong areas that we should still study and review because we don't want to fall into the trap where you completely forget about the strong areas let's say these the ones here you're like i'm already good at this i'm not going to study it so much that's a trap you still need to study it because each exam is different maybe on the next exam you'll get completely different questions that are somewhat harder they will be different so you still need to review this even though it's it's a strong area. You're not going to put a lot of time and effort into those, but you want to still study everything. Definitely put in more time on the first half for this report on the fundamentals. So these are the strong areas, weak areas. Now looking at the priority areas for improvement. Materials, definitely critical. Statics is below average. Mechanics and materials, engineer economics, and dynamics. Here I gave you five of these. So tackle these real hard focus heavy on these to review these and try to grab a lot of points especially statics mechanics and materials and materials economics that too you can get some easy points dynamics try to focus on the fundamentals it's four questions four fundamental questions try to get the easy ones don't go too in depth in dynamics nothing too crazy you want to still review that and get easy points that are maybe just in the handbook use equations plug and chug things like that so that's going to be the priority areas for improvement if you're interested how this was calculated it is a way the average score again it accounts for the items the number of questions that's why the keyword weighted is there so we get the weighted score for each knowledge area in this case for the civil fe then we add this up together then we get it as a number and that number is going to be converted to a percent of 54.4 percent way the average here's the steps for the calculation and last tips for you especially if you're preparing for the civil fe exam make sure again to cover all the topics don't rely on the strengths alone the fe exam is a broad breath exam so aim to cover each topic area especially once that we tend to avoid focus on high weight items topics makes sense more questions more of a chance to get correct answers so you want to focus on those you have the opportunity to get more correct questions and that is going to increase your score because the exam again is graded on the number of correct questions you get right so you can do if you do really well on these you're grabbing a lot of points for these the first half from mathematics and statistics up until serving definitely has a lot of questions then the second section but here these subtopics structural water geotechnical transportation need to be focused on they carry major scoring weight 
Now, strengthen your core engineer mechanics. For this report, what is that? Statics. The statics has to be strengthened. That's the fundamental mechanics. So statics, dynamic mechanics and materials are definitely a must. They're fundamental. A lot of students do good on those. And if the average fashion examinee is doing good on that, we have to hit that. We have to aim to be at their average passing or above, do better. So make sure you understand the concept, not just memorize equations as you do practice problems. Master the math, it's gonna show up everywhere. You can get a lot of math, fundamental problems in the mathematics and statistics, and some of these are used and can be solved really easy using the calculator. So easy points can be grabbed out of that math and statistics section. Don't skip secondary topics. Topics like surveying construction may seem less important, but sk skipping them could cost you several points. Every topic matters. Practice time management and exam strategy. Maybe this was the biggest lacking area for you. It might be a topic. It might be just how you went about the exam. You didn't have exam taking strategy. You were panicking from early on. Maybe you didn't use the flag button. I always tell my students, flag, 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 hit that flag button. If you don't know this immediately, or if you're getting stuck, if you're getting frustrated, hit the flag button, move on. So that's going to be a strategy I tell all my students to practice through the direct top quizzes and full length practice exams that we have in the course. So you want to simulate exam day conditions during practice, train your timing, know when to move on and ensure you attempt every question. Do not leave anything blank. A best guess is always better than leaving anything blank. And lastly, use practice diagnostic to guide you. Don't guess your strength. Use quizzes and practice exam to identify weaknesses. So this diagnostic report is telling you stuff. It's telling your weak areas. And at the same time, you're gonna use the quizzes that you solve, the practice problems and the full length practice exams to know exactly where you're lacking, which knowledge area, which topic, is it unit conversions? Is it applying equations? Or is it just you're getting frustrated and you're making silly mistakes? It could be a variety of things. So use that to guide you and track your progress after completing each topic.